Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the River Wren podcast. My name is Bradley, and it's been a while since I've done one of these. I've had various things going on, but nevertheless, we're back, and I'm delighted to say I'm going to be joined by Patrick today. First of all, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. We're good, thank you. Thanks for having me on again. Appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem at all. So this sort of uh, episode, it's going to be, I think, a little bit more structured than usually. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the season so far, and uh, let's be honest, the horrors that have uh, <laughs> occurred this season, and well. I say this season, this season, last season, year before. Yeah. Um, but let's just focus on one bad thing at a time and have, have a look at this season first. But then we're going on to a more positive note, a ball about the, the brand new sensory room. Uh, Patrick's going to give us a really good insight as the the project, how it came about, the importance of it, all stuff like that. And in the end, we're going to, of course, see um, Patrick's five aside um, <laughs> all-time Dover team as well, which I'm very looking forward, much looking forward to. Me too. Me too. Right, so I guess we've got to start, haven't we? Um, uh, yeah. So far, go on, you start. Uh, uh, what so do you like, think's um, gone wrong? Well, Daphne, I don't... I'll, gonna, I'll say it right now, I feel sorry for Brundle. I do, 100%. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I loathe going on Twitter or any kind of social media, actually, after a game. Um, I mean, I like a moan to be fair, um, but I do. I love it. I see some comments. Um, happy to obviously get rid of him, and I, I do get it. But there's never anything mm. constructive with it. Like, let's replace him with, like, and this is the reason why. It's more just like Brundle out. It's not going to solve anything. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he's definitely got to hold his hands up, in my opinion, um, and look at like the way he set teams up. Some of the tactics have been, in my opinion, like baffling. Okay. Um, and I would say as well, like his reluctance or apparent reluctance, according to what you've read and stuff about having an assistant manager is strange. Cause I would say that in the position he's in and, you know, getting people that he trusts would probably help him. Um, yeah. And I'd, I'd love to know more about the Lee Flavin thing. Cause I've only ever heard great stuff about him. Um, it's, I, I'd like to know a bit more about what happened there. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would to be fair, but you know, that's, per- that's obviously private. Um, what's, whatever's gone on, the club's gone on, but um you know, when when he when he came in, I thought, right, that's that's a great appointment because that that man knows non league football. I thought that's that's incredible. Um, yeah. And then it, for whatever reason, didn't work. Um, but then you'd surely like to think that someone else is lined up. Um, I don't know whether that says something about Brando. I don't know, but it. I think with all things in life, there's three sides to the story. There's one side, there the other side, and the truth, isn't there? Yeah, so, it, well, exactly. We... I think yeah, exactly. Um, but then you just look at the way the season's gone. I'm not saying an assistant manager would 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 fix absolutely everything. It wouldn't, but it would at least maybe give him some insight. As in, like, I tell you what, this isn't working. Let's try this. Because instead, he's literally talking to himself, isn't he? Pretty much, and thinking like, "Well, do we try this? Do we try that?" Yeah, um, for sure. But I reiterate strongly, I do genuinely feel sorry for him. He's thrown in the deep end big time. Um, I mean, what is he? Twenty nine years old, I think. Is his first yeah. managerial job? I mean, it's a tough one. Um, he's got a very small budget. Um, I don't know if it's the smallest in the league, but I wouldn't say it's competitive by any stretch of imagination. Yeah. Um, for for whatever reason, by the way, but it's not. He's got together a team that I still think, from what I have personally seen, is playing for him or at least listening to him to an extent. Um, apart from like the odd occasion, like for example, Welling at home last Tuesday, the first half was the most. That's the worst I've seen us play. Yeah, I agree. For, I agree. for a long time, I didn't understand anything that was happening in that first half. I mean, I, my point about them playing for him, they came out in the second half and it was a different team. Um, yeah. But everyone, I think, going up to that game thought, right, this is, this is just, you know, your cliched six-pointer, like, we need to win this. That first half, I, I mean, they were walking. No one knew what they were doing. I don't think anyone had a clue where they were playing. I mean, I love Paris Locke. I think he's, I think that, he's, he's, he's not going to be at this level for a long time. But no, I don't he, think he's going to be stayed no. on until after January uh, as well. Which... I wouldn't surprise. It wouldn't surprise me if they recalled him, but he is playing, so maybe not. But he he looked completely, in my opinion, like bewildered. He didn't have a clue where he was going, where he was playing. And then second half, he came out, and I thought he was great. I mean, he ran himself into the ground, but he looked like positionally lost. And I just watching it, I just felt like baffled. I've never ever wanted to leave the over game, but at half time, I was actually like, right, I could actually be at home. This is yeah. awful. And then, you know, we came out and, yeah, we gave it a go. And it's great, but you're 2-0 down. And, you know, don't get me wrong, 98th minute or whatever it was, had, you know, Charlie Naylor, fantastic. And the celebrations were great and everything else, but it's not three points. Yeah. Um, and I I, I don't know. I, 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 do, I mean it, though. I do feel sorry for Brundle. I do. 
I if there was someone who 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 could be offered and have the tools given to him to move us on, I would obviously as a fan think, yeah, let's go for it. But I just don't think that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, uh, that's interesting. So you're in the boat of if there was someone available, the right person, mm-hmm. you would think change a manager. I no, I I mean yes. Well, I'm conscious myself here, aren't I? Yes, I'm <laughs> no. I I would say you know yeah, a hundred percent. If the if the way the 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 tools that are given to the manager change, yes, I would say a hundred percent. Why not? Um, you know, give it give it a go. I mean, it's it does work. It's been proven to work, doesn't it? Replace the manager when you're in a position like we're in. Yeah, quite. However, he Brundle, sorry, has not been given those tools. So also, I look at it from the point of view like if he had a bigger budget, would we would we be better? I don't know because you're gonna you would have by um by rights you'd have better players, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, but no, it's, for sure. It's 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 a tough one because I don't think like if if Brundle, like I said about the assistant manager. From what you've read and what we've heard, that's him saying, I don't want an assistant manager. I find that baffling. But he you can't tell me that he wouldn't want a bigger budget in terms of like um playing stuff or like you know, different types of players. So I don't I don't know. I feel I I feel like he I feel like if he left, I'd hope he would I, if he left or if he was sat, I hope that he would leave with like everyone's best wishes and I hope they would I hope they'd understand the job he's he's done or had to do. But yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm a Dover fan. I want us to stay up. I want us to progress. If that meant change the manager, yeah, okay, fine. But I don't think that if we change the manager and the the way the clubs run above carried on, um, I don't think that uh, I don't think things would change. And that's and that isn't a dig, by the way, anyone, because I, I just don't think it would. I think we yeah. are where we are. I think we are where we're at, and we need to be slightly more realistic with it. However, oh, obviously, everyone has an opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, but yeah, of course, but obviously, obviously, I would say you know the way things have gone this season, you know, no one's going to turn up, and no one's going to, no one's going to think, oh yeah, yeah, this is fine. Of course, it is. Like let's, 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 uh, you know, was it? Is it? We won two games in thirty or something. We've won at yeah. home since February or something. I read the other day, like the league, no one yeah. thinks that's all right. No one's going to make excuses for that. Oh, they think, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're you're saying, and. um I think assistant manager wise, I I pr- can pretty much assure you that if there was the right assistant manager within our budget mm. that was available, mm. it would happen. I'm almost yeah. certain of it. It would happen. Mm. I think it's a bu- it comes down to budget again. Um, yeah. Obviously, I, I don't know for definite, but that that's my understanding of of what what's what's going on. Mm. Um, I think we've been. You know he's made he's made mistakes this year, Mitch has. And yeah. He's admitted to them. Substitutes at the wrong times, yeah. maybe the wrong substitutes, changing the team too much. But, yeah. Um. You know he's he's young and he's he's gonna he's gonna learn from it. But also, yeah, I agree with that. Off off the pitch as well. Um, at the beginning of the year, of course, with Miles Judd. Um, yeah. He said he yeah. was going to be joining, and Miles. I think that's. Uh, I agree. That's 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 obviously like a. That's that's as soon as before the season's even started. That's a massive thing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, no, because yeah. they played the year, the year before, mm. and uh, again, this is where I agree with you. Where you know you sort of feel sorry for Mitch because yeah, that's not that's not his doing. Yes, he's probably naive now, looking in hindsight, and that oh yeah, you know, shouldn't have said. But you do, you do, you do. You do. The thing is though, he made a point, didn't he? Like he he took a gentleman's agreement. Yeah. He's made a point. He's made a point that they're friends. Um. You, you do you do take that a bit on face value, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's also important to to remember that we're not the only club that's happened to. It. I mean, yes, oh, yeah, no, no, sorry, a couple of days ago, FC United and Manchester announced <laughs> saw, a striker. Yeah. yeah, you saw this. Yeah, that's yeah. a striker. Got the interview, got the photo yeah. with him in his shirt, yeah. and then a day later, he's gone. Yeah, yeah, you know, which is it's... even worse. In my yeah, opinion. completely, a hundred percent. And I'd say it's worse as well in the in like well not the middle of it, in into the season, it's worse because. You're clearly replacing the position you need. Obviously, at the beginning of the season, we need we need everyone all hands on deck, don't we? But it, you still have time to replace them. Um, yeah. Whereas they've obviously seen that they ha- they need a player in that position right away. They've got their man. They're happy. They've got him. You know, his tracksuit doing his interview, and then yeah, a day later, he's gone elsewhere. It's, yeah, that was yeah, that was mad. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, um, I I mean, I've publicly supported Mitch on mm. Twitter and stuff before. Yeah, and I you know. I, 
like I said, we're all entitled to an opinion, and I completely mm. respect those who disagree. But in my opinion, I would stick by Mitch. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if we go down, I'd still stick by him. I don't want to go down. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to get down. Dang. Go down. But the team, it's, it's it's definitely a project that's being built, and yeah, we're having to be so careful as to who we sign. Mm-hmm. It's easy for Mitch to say last year wasn't my squad, and I feel like this year. Yes, it's more his squad than last year, but it's still yeah. restricted by he was even so he, even even so though, it is his squad. You like factually this year is yeah, yeah. Like, well, he, he chose them, but also like that gives him zero wiggle room. So it's like right, last year wasn't my squad, this year is my squad. It's not just gonna click straight away. Like no. he's gonna have to, you know, find out. I mean, like, you know, a few players left already, haven't they? Like that Kayani. Who's uh, gone to Whitehawk? I mean, yeah, he, he, t- I mean, he to me and to other people, I thought he looked decent personally. But yeah. I trust, I trust that someone who sees him more than I do, um, and, and what their opinion is on a player. I trust what I trust what he thinks. Um, that doesn't give him any room though. He can't just say like, oh yeah, that that, that wasn't my squad. This is my squad now, and then I'll, all of a sudden it all magically gels together. That never happens. This is a whole entire new squad. There is some like you know players in there that have played like steps below. They're gonna need time to kind of cut their teeth as well. Um, I, I, I think I, I think I, I think I think some of the I think some of the players are decent. I really do, hundred percent. I think the bit that frustrates me so much is the consistency. Yeah, we can't. You can tell me go and lose one 0 away to Eastleigh, a league above, and fly mm. form with scoring goals for fun, and mm. then have a first half like we did against Welling. Same players. <laughs> It's... I compl- yeah, I completely agree. That's that was that was the thing for me. Like the the atmosphere at Crabble, I would say in the last like couple of years, and don't get me wrong, there's considerable effort I've seen to like kind of change that has been up and down. But yeah. at Welling, that first half was the weirdest I've seen. Like I mean, like on the stands as well, it, everyone was just like scratching their heads, they looked confused. Like I think if Welling had any kind of like decent attacking players. And had like pushed forward a bit more. I I I hate to think what the score could have been like four or five nil at half time. But I, I don't even think I'm exaggerating. It was just awful. No one had any idea what they were doing. Um. So I get what you mean about consistency. Like we could put in a decent performance one week and the next, just not bother. I don't understand what you know. We're not in a position to be doing that at all. Yeah, I mean, speaking from a fan, it's easy to say, you know, we're inconsistent. Uh, we've had bad mm. luck because we have. Um, yeah, we have. Yeah, but. Every team does. Yes. You know, every team has referee's decision that goes against them. Maybe mm-hmm. we have more than others. But from a fan speaking, it, it's so un it's the unknown. You never know what you're gonna get from this team. And I think that's not a blessing at all no. for a manager. If he doesn't know if he puts a team out and he doesn't know what he's gonna get from a certain mm-hmm. players, because some players are absolutely fantastic some yeah. game, and then the next game they're just completely woeful. No disrespect mm-hmm. to them, but I think that's just the facts. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, yeah. So I I understand why the rotation of the squad is happening because why would you reward someone for a poor performance? Yeah, and, I agree. And with give that, someone yeah. else a chance, but there's also an argument for consistency. I I think there's so many factors into why the season has gone the way it has. Mm. Um, that I I well. I'll say it now. I I definitely don't think the entire blame's on on Mitch Brundle. No, not at all. I, I don't think don't. I don't I don't think you you can't you cannot narrow it all down to to him. You can't. It's 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 impossible. I mean, it might be might be easy to do that from the outside looking in, but yeah. if you if you have experience of being a Dover sport, especially the last few years, you can't you can't just put it all on him. And and people who and you know like I know like you said earlier, everyone's got an opinion. They're entitled to it, and I agree, obviously, but. When I see people who seem to think that's just like a quick fix, as in there you go, that's the solution, sack him, job done. I'd be willing to bet money that we'll be in the same position with someone else in charge if other things don't change. So yeah. it's it's not it's it's not just down to it's not just down to him. It really isn't. Um but yeah, also, other hand, there's definitely been, like you said, questionable substitutions, questionable tactics. Um I know I keep mentioning the Welling game, but I cannot get over that first half. Um it was just baffling. Um, but yeah, it's it's not just on him. I agree. Yeah, I think it's some of it as well has got to go down to the players and the consistency. Yeah, and completely. They, some of those players probably thinking, "Oh, if Mitch goes, I'll get a run in," and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. But as experience shows us, a new manager comes in, they'll bring their own players. They'll bring their own. Of course staff. they will. Yeah, of course and they I, are. I think some of these players have really got to step up because I I don't know about you, and again, this probably was very harsh, but 
um, a team. Look, thinking back like the Chris Kinnear days and the teams they had, yeah. there was such a more pride. I think I want to say, you know, it wasn't just for themselves; it was mm-hmm. for the team as well. Um, there was just a bigger connection. I feel like within the the playing squads. Do you feel that? Uh, last year, I would have agreed with you. Yeah, hundred percent. I would have said last yeah. last year, um, or the season. I mean, I think to be fair, I don't blame them. But the season where we were started on minus whatever it was, national league season, what we got? Yeah. That's it. I mean that that was just like that was just every game was individuals playing for each other um playing and just basically like put themselves in the shot window and i didn't that that was i i i went to every home game i think and i I hated it in a way um yeah. but last season as well i'd, I'd, I'd agree to, to an extent um yeah I, I i get i get what you mean i don't know like speaking i've I've obviously i've met them through the sensory room stuff um right they there is there is there is a jail there i think but I don't know. They're in. I think to be fair, they're in. They're not, they're not in an enviable position, are they? Like, oh, don't get me they're... wrong. I think there's definitely a jail off the pitch. Absolutely. Mm. There, there's, oh, okay. there's no doubt about that. I mean, I'm thinking more on on the pitch. It sort of looks like it's, it's difficult to explain, but it it just sort of feels more like individual performances on the pitch to try and get them up to the next. But level. That could be. That could. That could be a case though of like someone taking the taking the mantle on. Do you know what I mean? Like grabbing the ball by the horns and being like, right, let's. Let's try and do something. Let's and that that kind of like then becomes an individual performance, doesn't it? Like yeah, absolutely, I, it could well be. I was scratching my head big time after Wellin when I saw um, the man of the match list and didn't see Dembele on it. I thought like he was great. He was the one player I thought actually thought I'm not having this and really tried to like drive forward, try to do something, try to you know he was he was harassing defenders. He was everywhere. I, I thought he was brilliant. Genuinely, I thought that's the best I've seen him play. I know he didn't score, but I, I thought that was the best he played um, for us personally until he come off. Um, but he, to me, looked like someone who thought, right, I've had enough of this. Let's let's try and do something about it. If I have to do it on my own, I'll do it on my own. Um, and he kind of, I think he kind of ran himself into the ground a bit, um, which is understandable. Um, so I, yeah, I do get, I do get what you mean. There is, there's definitely been individual performances, but maybe, and again, I don't want to seem like I'm bashing Mitch here, but that could be down to his management, as in like. They're they're not being given like ideas of what to do as a team in units. Let's go and do it on our own. Um, but it, that might not be the case. I don't know. I do see. I do see what you mean. Though, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So I think to summarize, it's you know Mitch has got to hold his hands up to an extent, but definitely not to the mm-hmm. full extent. Um, like I said, I, I think I'm... he does. I think he. I think he does though. Like I think oh, he definitely does. does yeah. In, I think. I think he does. I think he does hold his hands up and get stuff wrong. I don't think you know. I've seen a lot of people as well bash him and say he doesn't do that enough. I think. I, I mean, I disagree with that. I think he does hold his hands up. I think he's you know he, he is that he's, I'd say learning on the job. He is kind of still, isn't he? Um, yeah. And it's not an easy job. It's not an easy. It's not an easy job to take on whatsoever. Um, so, I mean, like I said, I, I'm fully 100 percent behind Mitch. I think mm-hmm. out of everyone available. I think the passion he has, because he does have a passion. I mean, oh, his 100%. words, we this club made him his words. Yeah. Um, with that season as 2017, 18, and you know, that kick started his career massively. Um, yeah, yeah. He's got a passion. He wants he wants to do well. And I can see the drive. And I really think some more time, mm-hmm. I think he is definitely the right person. Like, so I really, I really want I really want to see him succeed here. Like I really do, hundred uh, percent. I want it. I want it to just click. One, whether that's tomorrow or in, in a week, or whatever. I do. I want to see it click. And it, and I get you. You know, you said earlier about if we went down, you still back him. For the record, so would I. Uh, it's if 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 the budget, for example, stayed the same, we had the same kind of player. That league. I'm. I mean, there is there's a huge difference between that league. I'm not saying we yeah. go down there and storm it by any chance. Um, I mean, I'd be happy with um mid table mediocrity if we went down. To be honest, just to kind of settle in. But right, there's. There is, there's more, there's more room down now. I'd say to 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 try the things that he's trying this in this league in terms of like tactically and swapping players around and everything else and and the budget even as well. There's more room to move with that down now. So I I, I do I would, I'd love to see him succeed here. Hundred percent. I agree with you on that. Okay, so let's talk about something a little bit more uh, positive than our dreadful start to the season. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about the sense room. So first of all, how yes. does it all start? How did it begin? Uh, I have right. So I have uh, I have um, a seven year old little boy. Um, he is autistic. He's on the autism spectrum. He is uh, quite high on it. Um, so we're talking uh, non-verbal, 
um he he stims all the time which is like self um self uh self stimming like behavior so he flaps his arms a lot he makes noises um you know he, like he he still wears nappy stuff like that so yeah he's like he's like delayed developmentally but he loved coming to football and i would i would always bring him and his sister to go watch dover home games um, and he absolutely loved it he thought the drum was incredible um the noise everything he just loved being in it like we would get to crabble i would be frog marched by him to the chips that was no argument there frog marched over there had to get two portions of those and then right you've got them and now frog marched me up to the terrace right to the top and stand with all the boys singing stand as close to the drum as you can feel the vibrations from like a bit further away he liked to hear the banging on the back and everything he liked it all loved it so it's just we the whole never match the experience oh he just he just, he just and my, my daughter the same absolutely loved it we never changed our routine we did the same thing went on a saturday got his chips walked up to the terrace and he had a huge meltdown covering his ears crying screaming he couldn't handle it so i thought okay well, maybe i mean as i said he's non-verbal he might have had a cold could have had a headache so i thought right move him on we'll go to the seats we'll we'll took me was it was literally like the hour mark of the game so it took me you know over an hour to calm him down which that doesn't really happen with him you can okay. kind of calm him down a bit quicker than that and i thought okay it could be any number of things you know not a problem i tried him again he didn't have a problem going up to the ground, whatever. We got close to the terrace and again, huge meltdown. I thought, okay. And it just it just has got progressively worse. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle the noise. He couldn't handle anything else. He just needed like, he needed five to 10 minutes of just like his own world, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And, and I just thought like, I had like, I suppose a bit of a light bulb moment, but like, you, you, I'm sure like people with, with children, regardless of whether they're autistic or not, will carry things for their kids. And I thought, right, well, I'll bring like, he likes this, he likes that. I'll bring all that. It kind of worked. And he would kind of, okay, but it wasn't like enough. And then I just thought like, I've seen a few sensory rooms like before and I've, and I've seen the, seen the idea at football clubs. And I think some of them are amazing. Like, I really do like the one at city, uh, sorry, man city is incredible. I think it is. Um, Mm-hmm. and I just got in contact with the club and I just said like look um, uh, I volunteer for the National Autistic Society in the local area um, I have a, a child uh, we, we come up to the uh, to the game all the time he's really struggling I really think that a lot of people are going to be in this position as well is this something that we could look to kind of work together on and, and get this sorted and it couldn't have really gone any smoother to be honest with you um okay. i mean i didn't uh I, I didn't really i didn't have to do anywhere near as much as i thought i would um in terms of like um not necessarily convincing but like getting my idea across my idea was taken straight away and it was like yeah that's brilliant let's do that um, okay so, so what yeah. was the next steps literally uh, for the club to do funnily enough i sent the email i think it was like <laughs> three days before vicky started um okay and I, got, I got a response from jim um and he said uh, something along the lines of like, I think this is a wonderful idea. I'm more than happy to look into it. Can you arrange a meeting with Vicky when she starts in like three days time? And I said, yeah, absolutely. We'll do. Um, obviously she's come in and there's multiple things for her to do. Um, so we, I sent her an email, got in touch with each other, arranged the meeting. I took my son up to the ground um, and I tried to obviously explain to him it's empty. He had a good look, he had a good walk around to like double check. No one was there, it was no noise. Um, and we got shown around the stadium and then we got taken up to the executive lounge area, whatever they call it, where the directors sit. Um, and we were shown where we would be given for the afternoon, which was a wonderful gesture um from the club to like give us that, and along with mm -hmm. some food as well for the kids, which was lovely. Um, and then we discussed where we'd put the room. And um Vicky's room is the perfect size for it. It's not doesn't need to be too big so it becomes overwhelming. And what about um, Vicky's room for those listening? So if you so obviously, you know, um where the family stand is. Yeah. Big family stand, obviously. And then you've got the terrace, it's in the middle, basically. So where there's like the old, you know, the old there used to be an old kind of food hut there, didn't there? Like hot That's drinks correct, and stuff. Yeah. So behind there, basically the old changing rooms where they used to be in that in that building. Um so her office is in there. So literally is you just there's a there's a there's a plaque and everything on the door. Um or on the wall, sorry, next to the door. You just go in there. But her room's the perfect size, it's not too overwhelming. It's it's wonderful, it's it's so good. And like seeing the kids the day it was opened using it was just yeah, it was amazing, it really was. So was it taken up quite well then by multiple people? Yeah, so when we when we went, I 
uh, so obviously I organised it all with with Vicky. Vicky just ran with it. Uh, I know I can't give her enough credit. I, I'd be here all night, honestly. Um, she organised that we had fifty tickets along with Jim um, to bring up members of the branch to come and like test it out uh, and as guests of the club. Um, and it was fantastic. Like it, it couldn't have been better received. Like, but the, I even um, when the kids were eating, my son does struggle to eat around people unless he's at home. Yeah um it's just not great with lots of people in the room which i totally understand and he started to panic and then i thought oh my god what am i gonna do and my friend tapped me on the shoulder and went take him to the sensory room and straight away took him in there calmed down in five minutes absolutely fine and i saw other kids who are nervous they haven't been here before there's a lot there is some noise there's a lot going on you, you don't you don't think about this if unless you're in that bubble yeah. of what they actually consider like even the noise about like, the rain on the roof and stuff one little boy was was um, concerned about that and I, you don't even consider it do you and it's yeah, just no, no, incredible it's, it's incredible what what the the benefits of a room like this will have to people who I mean I've got multiple messages from people who said oh like I've never never thought I could bring my son up today but I've always wanted to or autistic adults saying oh I want, I want to come to a football match and now I feel like I can like that the benefits from that alone are incredible like and the club, the club, the club should be very, very proud that they've managed to like put like put this together and um, offer something like that to people. It's, it's it's brilliant. I think that's something people listening, if they're having any doubts about the sensory room and you know would it work or not, I think the best thing to do is just give it a go. Just try yeah, it. definitely, definitely, hundred percent. It's it's there to be used. Like it's all set up, it's ready to go. It's 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 wonderful for what it is. If you've got. I couldn't, I couldn't speak highly enough of it. If anyone has got children or, or you know, has an autistic relative, regardless, if they need a quiet space, it's there for that. It's not just for kids to go and unwind or play or, you know, calm down in their own way. They're, it's a safe space for anyone. It's not, And it's not just for autistic people. It's anyone who may need it. You know, it's a sensory slash quiet room. It's there. Um, but it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's, opened, it's opened a lot of doors up for a lot of people, which is, which is lovely, really, really is. So we've spoken a lot about the effect it has on people who are suffering um, and struggling, shall I say, from from autism. But what about you, uh, from your perspective, to going up to a game now, knowing that sensory room is there? What kind of impact does that have on yourself? It's 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 changed it's changed my idea of, of football with him because I'm 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 in a I'm in a I'm in a I class myself to be in quite a privileged position. Like he he has a, a wonderfully supportive um, granddad um who will if i say look i do you know what i, I wouldn't mind going to watch dover on saturday um he'll he'll say look do you know what i'll take him we're, we're gonna go do something for a couple of hours that's great now i have the kind of option where i can i feel like now i could give it a go again because i didn't just magically one night think i'm gonna stop taking him to football i just kind of thought this isn't fair on him whereas now this is more fair he will over he would start to realize i i have for this here i can do this here it will help him calm. I mean, it calmed him down in a huge amount that that on that one day, and I saw that for myself. So I know that's going to be a recurring thing. As in, he will calm himself down because he knows actually I can go and do this if I need to. Whereas before, he may have felt like, oh, I'm 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 stuck. I'm surrounded by noise. I don't know what to do. Now we can take him out of that. It's a huge, it's a huge change for him, um, and it's a huge change for me. Like I, you know, I I do anything for my son. Of course, I would. Um, but. Being able to go to football is something that's quite important to me. I've been going since I was like four or five years old. I'm thirty now. I, I, you know, I, I love that I can take him, and in cater to his needs as well. I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. What kind of role has Mega had in uh, the development of the sensory room? They've been fantastic. Um, I mean, if we're talking if we're talking completely factually, you'd have to speak with Vicky, but they, they have been incredible. Like they, I know for a fact that the use of the lounge um or the suite or whatever it's called was was gifted by them um i know that i don't know the cost of it but i know that it was yeah, um, yeah. and and i believe that the the tickets were worked on with the club as well um so that obviously the club went out of pocket um because obviously there were i think there were roughly like 30 adults the rest were kids uh or 20, it was, i think it might have even been a 25 25 split but obviously i understand that leaves the club out of pocket um, and at the end of the day, they are running the business, and then they need they need that need that money coming in. I believe that they work with that as well, and I do believe that they have um, donated or at least contributed towards the actual room itself. Um, 
again, if you want, if I was to give you the actual facts of that, Vicky would be the person to tell you. But they they have massively contributed. They've helped. They've been incredibly supportive as well. Um, I know that when Vicky spoke to them about the idea originally, the idea straight away was like, yes, hundred percent. There's never been a shadow of doubt from anyone. I need to stress that. Like Mega, Jim, anyone else at the club, they've all been like, yeah, hundred percent. This is a great idea. We we can see the need for it. Let's do it. Let's just. All we need to do is work out how we're going to make it work. They've all been fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. So we've got the new sensory room. That's a nice bit of fresh air, um, or you know, that's a bit of space away from the, the negativity. So moving on from that, let's now talk about yourself and your your experience with Dover Athletic and what <laughs> I like to do on the podcast. Um, I especially did a lot at the beginning. Um, mm. I always just find it very fascinating. Is I ask the guests to put together their five aside of all time Dover Athletic <laughs> team. So I know I've asked yeah. you this to get it prepared, ready. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I've, take I've, it away, I've mate. Done, I have, I have, I've done my, I've, I've done my homework. I've been, I've been stressing about this for weeks. Um, goalkeeper has got to be Mitch Walker. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, if if you did say before though that we could allow honourable mentions. Yeah, um, that's right. Uh, this is a bit of a, a bit of a weird shout, probably, but Adam Parks, the young okay. lad, was on loan from Watford from what, when we were in yeah, that. Yeah, Watford, that's right. Yeah, we were in the, when we were in that, you know, that god awful national league season. He, I think he might have been nineteen when he came to us, or eighteen, whatever it was. He, to me, watching him was mature beyond his years because he was he was in an awful position. I, I didn't envy him at all. Like the, the defense in front of him was. I don't even uh, nothing was it. It was pointless. Yeah. Um, he. He kept it. I mean, it was embarrassing, but he kept it from being like massively embarrassing. Um, I I thought he was one player from that team that could walk away with his head held high. Um, and also off the pitch, a lovely, lovely guy. Um, he without any prompting, I don't even not even sure how he did it. Uh, donated to a charity walk that me and my friends did for Pilgrim's Hospice, like four of us. Um, who uh who are Dover fans and go together. I don't know how he found out about it, but he donated to it without anyone prompting. Um, I just said, like, thanks for your support and whatever else. And he's just a lovely lad. He's, he was always really nice to my daughter as well. Like she, she was a big fan of his and had had many photos of him. And he always made her feel like you know number one fan. And I just thought, lovely lad. Um, and I really hope that he goes on to. I think he's at Plymouth Parkway now or something. That's but I hope correct, he goes. Yeah. yeah, I hope he goes even further on. Um, and I think he's a wonderful keeper as well to add to it. But yeah, Mitch Walker, it's got to be Mitch Walker, isn't it? It's got to be in goal. Yeah, definitely. Um, like golden era. Yeah, I mean, he was just he was just great, wasn't he? I loved it. I'm glad to see him back playing as well because I know he had an awful injury, didn't he? Um, That's right, all the shot. But, but yes. now he's at Whitehawk and he's he's he is. doing it fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's got to be him. That was never in doubt. Uh, if we then move on, it's Connor Essam. Okay. Connor Essam. I absolutely loved him. <laughs> I don't think um, we've had Connor Essam yet. So uh... I absolutely loved it. I thought he was brilliant. I really did. He was uh he was absolutely fantastic. But if I'm it's not even just for anything. There there are other reasons, but the goal at Cheltenham. Okay. That was like one of the that was that was just one of the best moments ever for me. That was that I I've never seen I've never been in a Dover end like that when that goal went in. That was that was nuts. That I that was just a, a very weird day altogether. But the the match itself and then the 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 goal. Uh, uh, yeah, that was one of the high, that's probably my highlight sport in Dover or one of them anyway. Um, like, but yeah, he he to me when we signed him, I thought it was a brilliant signing. And I just I thought he never really put a foot wrong. I thought he was I thought he was a really good player, dependable. Um, he's it's a fabulous man. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, big, big fan, big fan of Conor Essam, hundred percent. Okay, so are we sticking with one defender, or have you got two or midfield? No, nah, we're gonna, we we are gonna stick with one defender. We're going all out basically. Okay, <laughs> we got a goalie and a defender, um, and then we're gonna move on to Devadix. Okay, um, it has to be. <laughs> it's got to be. He, uh, he. I just think we. I, I think looking at it now, obviously, um, it's it's easy to look back on, but we were so lucky to have him. <laughs> He was just absolutely ridiculous, like just such a good player. Um, I, I, I there's another goal against Cheltenham. Yes, yeah. Watching watching him watching him play was just was just lovely. Like it was just it was just, it was just he was a joy to watch constantly. I thought I, I don't remember ever thinking that he didn't put in at least an eight out of ten in any game. Not really. 
Um, I think he always showed up. I think he, I think also, like, I mean, I, I could be completely wrong here, but I think he actually loved playing for us. Like, I got that impression from him. Um, yeah, yeah, no, he's publicly said he really enjoyed his time at Dover. Yeah, but I just, no, I just, I, he, he's one of those players that I've spoke, I've actually spoken to my daughter about. And like, she's eight years old. Um, she's, she said to me before about old, no, old Dover players that was, I say old, but like when I was younger and he was just, he was just a lovely player to watch. For your daughter's time. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way of putting it. Thank you. Yeah, much better <laughs> instead of old. <laughs> um, yeah, he he was just just brilliant. Um, I loved him. Great player. Um, then uh, Ricky Modest is my next one. Yeah. Uh, again, just I just I just thought he was brilliant. I mean, I I haven't listened to all of it, but he again has been fairly controversial recently. I think a dive on a podcast. That's right. Um, yeah. But he again, I just he he had a bit of flair about him, didn't he? Like yeah, just, he I, didn't stop working. He never no, stopped exactly. working. He, he ran and ran and ran. He was just, he was just, he yeah, exactly. He was always constantly trying to get something going. Um, and I just, I or I just, I, I just having him, having him on our team, like watching him play. He, I just, I always thought he was, he was consistent too, and the he, he never failed to put the work in. Um, but yeah, he was. I mean, I, I could, I could speak about so many players here, but yeah, he, I couldn't, I couldn't leave him out. He was. He was excellent for us. Uh, he's a was he Concord now? Lee below. Yeah, yeah, Concord. He was there yeah, last Con- year as well. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, of course he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he was. He definitely one of my all-time favorite Dover players. Um, and then we are finishing with a striker. Uh, I tossed, yeah. I could not choose between the two. But flip of a coin, um, Birchall. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's between Birchall and Miller, isn't it? Like, um, it has to be. I think there's arguments for both, but Birchall, the FA Cup run in particular, um, that's always that always in, um, 2008, isn't it? It's always going to stick in my memory that, like the Aldershot game, the Gillingham game, obviously. Like he was just, uh, again, it's a bit like Devidix. Like we were very lucky to have him, um, and I just, yeah, he he was just excellent. He really was. And obviously, obviously Miller. I mean, you know, he's very, you know, it's difficult to leave out Miller, obviously, but. Um, I'd have to. I would. I would have to choose Birchill personally, just because the. I mean, don't the, that team with Miller and Payne um, will always live long in the memory. But the FA Cup run, like I just, I enjoy that more as a fan. To be honest with you, like I always, I think of that the the Miller and Payne era, kind of almost like the. Well, we were so close, weren't we? You know, the semi finals of the playoffs. So close and to then, the football league, and it just yeah, exactly, and it, it, it's just it's gutting to think about. <laughs> Whereas like the yeah. FA Cup run, we went a lot further than anyone thought, with uh, with a good team, and you know it's nice to think. But that that you know Forest Green wasn't it? That was just. What Keanu Marsh Brown? Yeah, it's who ironically just... played for us um he, season he after. He did. He's yeah, he certainly did. Yeah, that that being that close to to that was just painful. Um, but yeah, Birchill has got to be my striker because that's that. If you think of like, the happiest moments of Dover, it seems for me a lot of them come up with the FA Cup, but. I just, oh yeah, that that FA Cup run was magic, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, I mean, my my favourite memory personally of Dover Athletics in the FA Cup, and that was that win against South End at home with uh, oh Arsenal yeah, Ryu. yes, that was. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it now. It yeah, that was some years ago. He was just, I I always look out for the late in Orient school just to see if he scored. Even now, just he does, that, he, he he does, he does play, for, he does start for them, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he, he starts. He gets a few goals from as well, but it had such an impact on me that that game i mean i had various stuff going on in, in my own life so and you know this is why we love football isn't it in the escape and yeah 100%. The team that was albeit struggling but in league one or in the national league and it was on bt and and it was packed. so cam so campbell's manager Sol campbell right, in the charge of self in yeah is that yeah it, it, um, it always make always makes me happy to see him upset so uh yes 100 <laughs> uh I have, I have my family at tottenham so you know oh it's, i see so yeah, so 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 to so to win there, uh, yeah, um, not a bad thing at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, no, you're, I forgot. Do you know, I forgot yeah. about that game for a minute. That was that was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you have uh, any other honourable mentions? Um. Yes, but I I I feel like I'm gonna pronounce your surname wrong. Okay. Um. So, uh, Krasniki. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Archie yeah. Krasniki. Yes. Right. I. I, I honestly I, I think he's great like for this level he's just such a good footballer like, I think he could play like the league above potentially but he's just clever like I loved watching him play I, it baffled me that he didn't get 
like as many minutes or seem to be as liked as he should have been. Like, but I I do think like in in some ways like he his football maybe doesn't suit this level in a lot of ways. Yeah, but I I love watching him play. Like uh, even even when we played them a few weeks ago, I know he came off and I, I know he got some grief. I don't really understand why. Like there, I heard some people like giving him grief for leaving when I mean I think everyone knew that he was just kind of like told to leave I don't think it was a case of that you know you, you, he wanted to I think it was like yeah you're out the door kind of thing um okay he 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 was he was he was brilliant I thought the other day I just I just yeah he's definitely an honorable mention I don't know if I don't know if he'd make my all-time like five aside, five aside but um wonderful player and obviously um uh when I chose Essam it was between him and Raggett but yeah, of course. I mean, you can't you can't leave Ragga out, but I I personally cannot leave SM out because of that goal at Cheltenham. Like that was just my like highlight was pointing Dover or one of them. Um, yeah. but yeah, Ragga obviously. I mean, uh, no, he's been he's been fantastic, hasn't he? Um, I I, I mean, if he'd stayed another year, it does make me wonder a little bit. But I know yeah. I have that with quite a few players. Um, yeah. If Ricky Miller stayed that one more year, well, yeah. I mean, I I I, I do kind of wonder where his career would have gone if he'd stayed with us a little bit. Um, but there's, there's no point really, is there, I guess. But yeah, Raggett, Raggett definitely. Um, yeah, I did always... I, did, I mean, he was fantastic, wasn't he? Um, and he's, is, is, is he captain at Portsmouth? Or he was, wasn't he? He's, but he's, he was, he was. He yeah. seems to be a bit more on the bench at the moment. Uh, okay. Portsmouth but this I mean, season. he's gone on to have a great career, hasn't he? Like, you know, scoring yeah, that goal did. scoring that goal for Lincoln, though, I mean, the FA Cup again. Um, yeah, against Burnley. Yeah, I mean, I even went to Norwich and stuff. It didn't, um, no, it didn't work out there. But still, we got a move to a club of that calibre. Is is you know phenomenal. And he, yeah, he was, he's, he's definitely a fantastic player. Yeah, and it's um, great to him. You know, the map he works. I remember when we had the podcast with uh, Mike Salmon, and he says he just didn't have a, he didn't have a day off at all. So, it's an yeah. absolute credit to him that he got to where he is. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that definitely deserved as well, hundred percent. Um, I say it's probably. Done with my own mentions. Um, although I am just going to check out the name. I'm sure people remember Tommy Tyne. I loved him okay. when I was a kid. I haven't got. I, I can't really. I can't really give you any more than that. I just loved him when I was a kid. Thought he was fantastic. <laughs> he was. He was like. That's when we're talking. I was like my daughter's age or a bit younger, and I'd get taken up to the ground. And I think he was like the, like almost like Premier League, just him on his own. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. I did, and I can't give you any more than that. But I just. <laughs> I, I've just sat in now and started thinking and that I'm going to have to check him out. He was just, he was, I thought he was great. He probably wasn't. I don't, I don't really remember too much about it, but he, he's just like my early childhood memories of Dover is him and um, the goalkeeper, Paul Hyde. I don't, I don't know if you remember him, do you? Just about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's like my early, early memories of Dover. Um, That's about it really. <laughs> but yeah, they're my, they're my extras, honourable mentions. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Patrick, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, yeah, thank you. Have to wrap this up now, mm. but I really appreciate the insight you've given us into the sensory room, uh, specifically. I mean, there's a lot more to it than I t- I realise, and just the impact it it has on not yeah. just uh people who are struggling with with definitely autism and and people who are struggling with being at match days, but even like the impact on yourself as well. I think that was also important for people to hear, you know, mm. your side of it as well. Um, and it's also always nice to talk about the old days a bit more so than the current <laughs> days. Yes, but, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate your time being on. No, so thank, thank you, you very much. On. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Okay, cheers. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate.